What's up guys, my name is Ace, and today I wanted to talk about suppressors in Warzone and how important it is to be using suppressors. Is it something that really is an absolute must-have and you definitely should be using this on your class setups? Or is it more of an optional thing where it's helpful but not necessary by any means? And the reason I wanted to talk about this topic today and the reason this whole thing got brought up was the fact that the agency suppressors and their equivalent for Cold War weapons were basically destroyed in Warzone with the Season 2 update. Previously, these suppressors would boost your bullet velocity slightly, just like the monolithic suppressors do on the Modern Warfare weapons, whereas post-patch, they actually significantly harm your bullet velocity to the point where it's not really viable to be using them on long-range guns, because your bullet velocity will be so low that you're just going to be missing shots due to the fact that it takes a while for your bullet to get there. Now the good news is Raven has confirmed that they are going to be fixing this and reverting that change to these suppressors. However, at least at the time of recording this video, that fix hasn't come out yet. Maybe by the time this is out, that will have been fixed. I do anticipate it'll be fixed at some point throughout this week, since they mentioned it will be fixed in the next hotfix update rather than the full-on title update. But this big nerf to the suppressors for Cold War weapons really brought up a debate as to whether or not suppressors are necessary. Because when this update first hit, my recommendation for people was to stop using the longer range Cold War weapons. It's still fine to use the Cold War SMGs, but you should stop using any of the ranged Cold War weapons and just go back to the Modern Warfare weapons until this gets fixed. And there was a good handful of people wondering why you should do that and why not just take the suppressors off the Cold War guns and continue using them. In my opinion, and I'm gonna be sharing a lot of reasons for this throughout the rest of the video, Suppressors are pretty much necessary for your primary guns at least if you're trying to be as effective as possible. If you're really trying to be as competitive as possible, trying to improve as a player and trying to rack up as many wins as possible, in my mind you should absolutely be using a suppressor at the very least on your primary weapon, but best case scenario you're using it on both of your weapons. And don't get me wrong here, I'm not saying that it's impossible to do well without a suppressor, and I'm sure there's going to be plenty of comments down there with people saying, I never use suppressors and I do just fine and I get wins all the time and stuff. That's great for you, and if you really believe that you're not holding yourself back by not using a suppressor, then by all means, continue going unsuppressed. However, I do strongly feel you're holding yourself back very significantly if you aren't using suppressors on your loadouts. In fact, I would even say that a suppressor is the most valuable attachment for most weapons in Warzone. So let's get into my reasoning behind this. The first thing I want to do is show the difference between a suppress and an unsuppressed weapon, since that's really what we're comparing here throughout this video. So the first and the biggest reason to use a suppressor is to keep you off the radar, and that works as intended. When you're firing your gun, your dot won't be showing up on the radar for firing your gun. But what does it look like if you're not using a suppressed gun? This is going to be a little bit of a revisit, I have covered this in the past, but I hopped in and did some testing on this. It turns out the range at which enemies are able to see that red dot when you fire an unsuppressed weapon is 250 meters. Now this covers a pretty large radius around a player. If we look at the overall map, this is the kind of coverage you get for an unsuppressed weapon. Anytime an enemy fires a non-suppressed weapon within this radius, they will appear on your minimap. And not only do they get a dot, they also get the little arrow above or below the dot. And this is something that a lot of beginners don't know about, but all of the more advanced players should already know this by now. If there's a little arrow above the dot, like a little hat, that means that that player's elevation is higher than your current elevation. Whereas if there's a little arrow underneath the dot, that means they are below your elevation. And if there's no little arrow, that means they are at least roughly on the same elevation as you. So in the hands of a more advanced player that really knows how to read a minimap properly and understands the ins and outs of those dots on the minimap, this gives them a ton of information to work with when you show up as a dot on the radar. Not only do they know exactly where you're standing on the map at that given point in time, they can also at least roughly determine your elevation so they can tell if you're on a rooftop or on the bottom floor of a building for instance. And this is a ton of information for them to be using against you. They can make a lot of decisions based on that data that they're getting from you. Now it turns out that's not the only practical use for a suppressor. The other practical use is it actually suppresses the sound. So it makes it harder to hear where shots are coming from. And once again, I did put this to the test and with a non-suppressed weapon, you can hear them from a very, very long distance away. You can see I'm beyond 400 meters here and just have a listen to hear what it sounds like when an enemy fires a non-suppressed gun about 400 meters away. Target right here. So at this range, you can still definitely hear that there was a gunshot and you can hear the general direction that that gunshot is coming from. 
and that information can be used in a wide variety of ways. Many times this just gives you an indication that there are definitely people one point of interest over, for instance. So if I'm currently in the Boneyard area, there's a pretty good chance that I will hear fighting going on over in storage. And I can use that information to either push that fight if I want to be more aggressive. And I've got that extra bit of information that tells me for sure that there is somebody there, or at least there was at the time of those shots going off. Or for more passive players, they can just use that information to sort of get a feel for what's going on around them so they can avoid those fights. Now let's compare that to a suppressor and how far away you can hear a suppressed gun. And it turns out this is actually a nice round number. The maximum distance at which a suppressed shot is even audible is 100 meters. Anything beyond 100 meters and you literally cannot hear the shot being fired. Enemy marked. So this is huge if you want to take out a player or another team, for instance, in one point of interest without letting everybody 400 meters away know that you took that player out. The more you're able to keep your enemies in the dark and the less information that you provide to them, the worse off they're going to end up being. And this gets more and more important as you progress through a match as well, because with a battle royale, you constantly have that shrinking circle, so the density of players tends to increase, and the area that you have to fight in is going to be decreasing as a match goes on. And you eventually get to that point in the endgame situations where if you fire an unsuppressed weapon, literally every single player that's left alive will know your exact location because that dot is showing up on their radar. And if you're against even somewhat competent players, this is very often going to be a death sentence for you. Even if you're a fairly competent player, you know what you're doing, you can handle yourself in a gunfight, and you feel confident that in a straight up 50-50 fight, you're able to win against most other teams that you run up against, it's generally still a really bad idea to let everybody on the map know exactly where you are, because yeah, you might be able to win that first fight, no problem. Maybe even the second fight as the second player or second team pushes you. But then what happens when the third, the fourth, and the fifth team start pushing you because they're all hungry for kills, especially once you start getting to endgame, you will often have players or teams that are hunting for kills and have been all game. When they all start converging on you at once because they have that information available and they can see exactly where you are, typically you're only going to be able to hold off for so long before one of them ends up taking you out. So this is why I do feel, at least in Warzone's current state, suppressors are pretty much necessary if you're trying to maximize your performance. Again, I'm not saying you won't get lucky sometimes and you'll be able to hold your own or you just happen to be in a lobby with people that aren't very aggressive so you don't get third partied or fourth partied by people coming in trying to take you out. But more often than not, you're going to be putting yourself at a massive disadvantage, especially late game. Now, if Warzone didn't have any skill-based matchmaking, I think my opinion on this would be a little bit different. I would probably even say once you reach a certain skill level, if you do become like a top tier player, for instance, then yeah, you could start taking suppressors off because that would just bring you more easy kills. However, that's not how the matchmaking works in Warzone currently. As it is right now, we do have skill-based matchmaking present, and therefore, by giving your enemies that very valuable information of exactly where you are on the map, it's really not a good idea at all, and it should be avoided at all costs, and this is why you should absolutely be using suppressors in Warzone. And since currently the monolithic suppressor actually buffs your bullet velocity, whereas the Cold War suppressors nerf your bullet velocity, and since bullet velocity is so important, this is also why I strongly recommend that you stick with modern warfare guns in Warzone until that suppressor gets fixed for the Cold War weapons. If you don't, you're putting yourself at a massive, unnecessary disadvantage. Of course, this is just my opinion on this topic. I'd love to hear from you guys in the comment section below. Do you guys agree with me? Do you think suppressors are very important in Warzone, especially once you start getting later into the game? Or do you disagree? Do you think that suppressors are just overrated and not really necessary at all, and you can play just fine without them? Just let me know those thoughts in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, a like rating is always appreciated. And don't forget to subscribe for more if you haven't already. I'll talk to you guys next time.